Has this ever happened to you? Uh, oh. <sighs> More whiskey bottles. Tired of floor whiskey? <laughs> yeah. You could say that. Have you tried having more shelves? What? Your shelves are full, right? Uh huh. Then you need more shelves, you f***ing idiot. Uh, hey. Try more shelves now and get that whiskey off the floor for good. Available wherever you can buy shelves. From the makers of No More Stairs Whiskey. Ah, yes. That was a good year. Hi, I'm Chad. You may remember me from such videos as the video that we put out last Friday. But today, I'm here to talk to you about proper bourbon storage. Specifically, having more shelf space to put all your bourbon onto. <laughs> okay, I always just wanted to intro a video like that. Dream fulfilled. So this is our new cabinet. A friend of ours custom built it to fit in this space that we had. And actually, we still need to get some uh, pulls so we can open the door uh, more properly. But as you can see, I've already started moving some bottles that are down here. It's mostly the Jim Beam stuff. Actually, yeah, it's all, it's all Jim Beam stuff. It came from over here on this shelf, which is just about empty now, but we've got some more to go through. So this shelf behind me, we kind of call the save shelf. Now there are some open things on there and some things that we will be opening. And plus, you know, when you have a lot of bottles already opened, you're not just rushing to have every bottle in your collection open. So the save shelf, it just makes sense to go into a uh, cabinet here with some doors because normally when someone comes to visit, they come into the bourbon library. We call it the library because you can check out any bottle that you like as long as it's already opened and as long as you return it. But the ones that are gonna be over here in this cabinet are more ones that you should definitely ask first. And that's why it's closed off, okay? <laughs> so the whole thing behind this process, the reason why we're doing this is to one, yeah, get bourbon off the floor, but two, to do a complete reorg of this entire room. So there's things that we have sort of an alphabetical order uh, by distillery that don't have room for it anymore. So obviously we're going to be taking this shelf over here, completely clearing it off, hopefully or mostly, and then starting again in this shelf with the A's and then the B's and so forth. And the idea is hopefully that's enough room. We'll one, have uh, better organized bottles and two, we'll have zero on the floor. It's a zero on the floor bottle initiative. Buzzwords, reorg, initiative, synergy. And since the last time we did a tour video, which was way back in 2020, believe it or not, a lot of you commented and said you wanted to see more of the bottles and go into more specifics. So I thought if I'm gonna be taking them off this shelf anyway, might as well pull off some interesting ones do a little talk about them. All right, I uh, opened up the cabinet. I'm gonna pull some, I've already put down there in the bottom back out for you. Uh, this is Jim Beam Distiller Series, which is a seven year 90 proof beam. That's got a, <laughs> a Fred No that, uh, I don't know, what do you think about the mustache? Should he bring the mustache back? Yeah, but uh, this was, and, and by the way, if someone helped us get a bottle or gave us a bottle or whatever, I'm gonna try to uh, call it out. So with this one, our friend Aaron actually uh, got two of these for us. One of them is up there in the Jim Beam section, which is open. And this one is uh, just for now, gonna be chilling in the safe shelf. You know, we had to pull out our oldest bookers, thanks to Swan for helping us get this one, but it's in a completely wooden box, like no preview. It's got the, the leather strap here. Make sure it doesn't fall out, jeez, Chad. 1998, I believe is when this is from. It's uh, C90E14, seven years and nine months, 126.7 proof. This will be opened at some point, but it's not right now. I don't know, when's the right time? Any, any time, any time's the right time, but we've got a lot of bookers open, so. Get back in there. Next up, something going in the shelf is Penthouse Bourbon. And you've probably heard of Playboy Bourbon here recently, but Penthouse? Yeah, uh, a full 10 years old, it says. 86 proof and distilled in Frankfort, Kentucky. So that means huh, Buffalo Trace. Ooh, and there we are. 1989 is when this is from. Uh, it looks like this was a Japanese export. So I think it's a 700. No, it's a 750, as you can see back here on the back, the Japanese writing. 
Uh, so this guy was not bought back in 89. This is only, I bought this about a year ago. Our buddy Todd Koopa was also looking at this one. Well, guess what? I beat him to the store. So when I open this, I'll definitely be sharing it with you, Todd. Okay, I, 10 year, another shout out to Swan. Bottle 136 of 628, it's 97 .7 proof. Okay, I, if you're not familiar, is uh, distilled in Indiana, bottled in Kentucky, and loved in Ohio. If you're outside of those three states, I guess you can't drink it. But this was New Riff before New Riff had their own stuff out. So while they're waiting for their own stuff to age, they had the OKI brand. Now this has since come back, but back then, once New Riff was four years old and it started to come out, OKI went away. So there was a 12 year, I think even a 13 year. They may have got up to 13 or 14 years, I'm not sure, but was able to save this 10 year at least. Keeping it vintage, the Jim Beam pin bottle. If you watched our Louisville hunting video, you may have uh, seen this one uh, called to your attention. If we were gonna spend money from things in that cabinet at uh, that store that we were at, it was gonna be on something vintage, as opposed to something just modern day and allocated. And ended up going back at the end of the day and picking it up. So this is super cool. This is a 700 mil. They were uh, for export, but it's got the, oh yeah, well it says export actually right there, but it's got the nice tax strip there in good shape and Sarah and I have had this before at a restaurant and we really liked it and I've always wanted to have one so picked it up one of our favorite four roses of recent years has been the Brent Elliott single barrel uh, this is 2016 it's barrel strength 51.8% uh, ABV looks like 14 year OESK and there was just over 10,000 bottles. And sometime when we ran into Brent, got him to sign it. Brent's a great guy. This was back in 2017 when he, uh, when he signed this. One of our favorites, we love it. We've got one open right over there. Glad to have a backup when we finish off that one. So good. This one's kind of interesting and dusty. <sighs> Y'all know Jefferson's Ocean and they're up to what? They're in like the 30s in the voyages if this is actually voyage one now it's not the very very first voyage um, because that stuff was from what i've heard out on the water for a, a pretty long voyage and it came back just like black like tar so this is actually voyage one extended is what they call it but 2015 is when this is from uh this is one of 954 bottles jefferson's ocean Oh, the pirate bottle. You gotta love it, mateys. Uh, <laughs> Elijah Craig, barrel proof. Call this a pirate bottle. It just looks like this is what pirates would drink out of. Look at that font. It's jagged font and it just, it just looks like it. 139.4 proof. This is the bottle, not the exact bottle, but the same proof that I cracked open with Ming Chen from uh, Comic Book Men way back in 2016 or, or 17. Cracked it open there, he hadn't had it before, I'd never had that proof, and wow, it was it was good, it was high proof. That was a, that was a good day. Love this, glad to have an extra here. Wild Turkey Rare Breed, a rare opportunity as it says right there. And I love it when bottles still have the price tag on it, this one, $54.99, but this is, um, you know, a, a label of yesteryear. It is 108.2 proof, and it's got this you know, great tag here. And honestly, I wish I could have every Wild Turkey Rare Breed, every like proof batch or, or expression, but this is the oldest one that we have. Also, I think a shout out to Swan on, on this one. And, uh, mm, tempting, tempting. This one's cool because it is a single barrel and a 375 was commemorating the one millionth visitor at Buffalo Trace. They're probably on like, I don't know, 10 million now. So many people go to that distillery. But I got Harlan Wheatley, the current master distiller, to sign this one. This comes from 2016. So yeah, they definitely have done another million <laughs> by now. 
Now it's not just all signed and LE bottles there. There's, you know, just little ones, this little airplane bottle of Weller Special Reserve, this uh, nice airplane old Jim Beam that uh, Sarah got for me as a gift. And you know, the little, uh, what was this, 375? Yeah, 375. I'm pretty sure Perry gave us this one. Things like this, I love to. Gotta keep these. Couple more sign bottles. This one we mentioned at, uh, in our latest hunting video, which was Bargetown. We found a signed Baker's by Baker Beam there in the Jim Beam gift shop. So we picked this up. Didn't get to meet him, unfortunately. It was just there for sale on the shelf. And this one, Jimmy Russell, Master Distiller, 2016. And it is made out to Sarah. Yeah, I got this for her birthday. Happy birthday. Sarah, right up there from Jimmy Russell. Staying on Turkey, remember when Russell's Reserved looked like it was uh, faux paneling in the station wagon? <laughs> Look at that, what is that? I think it's nice. These two. These are birthday year Wild Turkey 101s for Sarah and myself. You can probably guess which one is for Sarah. It's this one, uh, and this is the birthday year for me. We will be cracking these open on milestone birthdays. So for Sarah, it'll be her 30th birthday. <laughs> and for me, of course, it'll be also my 30th birthday. Okay, my 40th. Okay, my fifth. These come from a very generous friend of ours. You know who you are. <sighs> no words, no words. Jim Beam Choice, <laughs> not the best bottle in the world. It's still an 80 proofer, but it's aged, ooh, five years instead of four. But this is, you know, back when 2016, Baby Chad picked blind in our first episode, which was 50 bourbons under $25. This ended up winning for me. I guarantee you it would not today. I mean, I don't know. I assume that it would not. When this was being discontinued, I had to get a few bottles. Sentimental value, that's the type of collector I am. And actually speaking about that, if you haven't already sort of realized this, the type of collector that I am, and this does differ from Sarah, I like to collect the old label if a new label of a bottle is coming out. That's the type of collector that I am, both a drinker and a collector. So yeah, sentimentality does creep up for me. It doesn't for Sarah, but you know, that's why we work together, right? And also the other type of collector I am, I wanna have a bottle of everything. And that means if I go to a store and there's some 80 proof three year old label that I've never heard of and it's like $10, I still want that bottle in the collection because I would love it if I could have every single bourbon ever made. I can't and I won't, but the, at least that's what I'm striving for. So I'm actually gonna show you some very unimpressive bottles, but that are in the collection. So stay tuned for that. But before we do that, don't you know that we have whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the hat and ooh, shirt that I'm wearing, Bourbon Bunker. We're in our Bourbon Bunker. And in fact, because you're watching this episode and because you've made it this far in the video, you can enter coupon code BUNKERIBN to get 15% off this shirt that I'm wearing. That's Bunker IBN for 15% off this shirt, but also look for our Glen Karens, our bottle cut candles, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. Normally Sarah would take this part, but I'll go ahead and do it. You can also become a patron by going to patreon.com slash it's bourbon nine. And for as little as $1 a month, you can join in and support us. It's one of the best ways to support us. It also gives you after the episode exclusive content, gets you in on our barrel picks. That's where we exclusively release those. And you can even join us on a barrel pick if and you're so lucky. It's patreon.com slash it's bourbon nine. And we're back. We're gonna start off with Echo Springs, yeah. Get off Echo Springs. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, Bartstown, Kentucky, 80 proof. It's a leader. What about Bankers Club? We have any Bankers Club fans here in the house? It is a Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 80 proof. No age statement, so this might actually be four years old. Hey uh, McCormick Straight Bourbon Whiskey Sour Mash Rare, age 36 months. And guess the proof? It's 80 proof. Ooh, it's the gold label. Okay, well, this is the good stuff. Next. Kentucky Supreme. This uh, is not a pizza. And don't let that eight fool you. It's not eight years old. It's number eight brand. Mm, cousins, uh, old number seven. 
80 proof, uh, bottled by Kentucky Supreme Distilling Company, Bardstown, Kentucky. This just makes me think this is what they would drink in idiocracy. Kentucky Supreme. Straight Western, I should not do voices. Charcoal filtered, okay, um, 80 proof. This is also feels like a liter. Paramount Distilleries, Cleveland, Ohio. And would you say we don't have Kentucky Tavern? Of course we've got a Kentucky Tavern. Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 80 proof. Got some floaties in there. And it's about the color of Mountain Dew. So those are the bottles that are, yes, part of the collection, but might not be displayed here with pride in the bourbon library. Not that I'm not proud to have them, because like I said, I want to have every bottle. How about back to some better stuff? Uh, this is Elmer T. Lee 100th year tribute. Shout out to Wu Drew for finding this guy for me. Uh, 100 proof instead of the normal 90 proof. Probably open this up one day, but have not as of yet. This stuff, my God, I wish they still made it. Old Fitzgerald, not the you know pretty decanter bottles that we know today, but just when it was probably four years old. Bottled and bond, uh, this is obviously a handle. And this stuff is just quality, especially for the price. I think like a 750, back when they were still making them, might've cost around 15 to $18. This was probably like maybe 25, I don't know. We found this in a little liquor store in Marion County, I believe, back when it had been discontinued for a while. And when we saw it, we we're like, let's stock up because this stuff is great quality. Great, great quality, especially for the price, but just in general, great quality. Forgive me, but this is Forgiven, uh, Batch 303. This is actually a gift from uh, Tony. Uh, 303, we also have 302, I wanna show you that one. 302 was the first batch. Now, this is another, like, you know, paneled station wagon type of thing. They loved it back then. Forgiven is the Boo Rye from uh, Wild Turkey. And what does my little note say here? Oh, Don and Jen Hamilton. It's in the tube, so I forgot about that. But uh, this one, this one we are waiting for. I think we have another one. Yes, we do, it's right up there. When that one's gone, I think the original batch gets open, so we're not gonna wait too long for it. But good stuff, great stuff. Glad to have it, Mwah. Do you guys know anything about these? Uh, Smooth Ambler, we got a still house collection recipe number two, aged three years. It's back from 2014 is the bottle date. And then we have the Yearling Bourbon Whiskey, which is bottled in 2016, 92 proof and four years, the little uh, 375s. I'd actually forgotten about these. Top shelf in the back, you forget about things. So it's a good thing to, you know, go through your whiskey every now and then, remember some things. Just an old Clyde Mays bottle, right? Um, $29.99 on the sticker there. I can remember when I saw this in some small store and I was like, I haven't seen a Clyde Mays label look like that ever. So I was like, this has probably been around for a little while. 85 proof, what an interesting proof. Mm -hmm. It's in the collection. Remember when Rebel had a yell to it? 2016 limited edition bottle. I mean, this is just, you know, the normal 80 proof stuff, but type of collector I am, I was like, ooh, that's a commemorative <laughs> label. Now, have I changed since then? Yes, because one, there's a room issue, and two, 2016, I was, well, I'd been drinking bourbon for a while, but I'd really ramped up into it in, in 2016, and actually 2015, really in the, like that collecting gear. So they got me, they saw me coming, and they got me on things like commemorative labels. I was like, yeah, need that. Brought this back from the last time we are in Vegas. It's the Bar Sound Bourbon Company MGM Resorts Edition. Only place that supposedly you're supposed to be able to get it is at an MGM Resort. Batch date of 2020. We were just there in 2022. So this has been around for a little bit anyway. But you know, you know how much Bar Sound Bourbon Company I already have. I had to have this one. I see some Old Crow Reserve in the back corner, but Again, floor whiskey in front of me, so I can't really get close enough to it, but Old Crow Reserve. Remember that episode? If you haven't, <laughs> you should go watch it. Probably. Was Kevin Bacon in it? Foliage and all this shit. Sorry. See, this is what I'm talking about. When Jim Rutledge retired from being the master distiller at Four Roses, I had to get a bottle that had his signature on it. And then when 
our buddy Brent, I call him our buddy, he's such a cool guy. <laughs> uh, when Brent Elliott came on to become the new master distiller, we had to get a Four Roses with his signature on it because now it's no longer like the yellow label, it's like the tan label or whatever. So I had to have these. Maker's Mark, what's so special about it? It's back when they dropped the proof to 84, down from 90. There was only X number of cases that went out. There was a pretty big immediate back, backlash, backsplash. <laughs> People dropping their bourbon, that was a backsplash. Clutching their pearls, because they couldn't believe that their 90 proof makers had gone down in proof. So that didn't last too long. So there's not a whole, whole lot of these bottles out there. And I found two of them at uh, Keystone Liquors, which was in our Bartstown uh, bourbon hunting video, is where I got uh, both of these. I mean, marked up a little bit because they are pretty old, but it wasn't so much for I was clutching my pearls. And that, ladies and gentlemen, should just about do it. I'll end it with the beloved Turkey Tail Kentucky Spirit here from Wild Turkey. I mean, it does look like a perfume bottle, right? But infinitely cooler than the modern day Kentucky Spirit bottle. But uh, yeah. Okay, so I'm not doing very well. The bottles that I take off the shelf, I'm usually just sitting right back down on the shelf. So I'm not really doing myself any good. So I think I should stop talking and actually get to moving some bottles. Wow, I don't know how long this video ended up being, but if you have stayed here till the end, thank you. And you must also like bottles as much as I do. So thanks so much. I'm gonna move out of the way here because if you haven't subscribed as already, you can do so by clicking somewhere up here. There's also suggestions of other videos down here and we hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks so much. And until next time, drink more bourbon. Yeah.